News with the candle daddy. He his supplier for the candles basically has, is running out. Um, because I guess there's a, a national shortage this year because of COVID. People were storing shit. I don't know, but um, yeah, he's nervous because he's doing crazy numbers on Amazon. Still now he's got this, and I want to scale, and I'm pushing him to scale, and he's like, hold on, we gotta wait a minute. So he's finding some new people, and the other thing that as weird is um, for the first three weeks we were working with them, all of the ad budget in the lookalike audiences was going to the five pack. And um, so he, he poured a ton of those because they were selling like crazy every single day. And so we had those in stock. And then all of a sudden on Saturday or Friday or something, it all started shifting to the candle audience. And yeah. he doesn't, have, and the issue is he has enough wax melts but he doesn't have that many uh, candles for the jars right now. So as soon as it started switching over, he's like, holy shit, I can't keep up with like 40 of these a day. Like I just don't have enough with that in Amazon. So we had to scale back hundred dollars less. And then he said, and you know, as soon as he gets these new jars, he'll scale up a lot higher. He wants to get to like hundred K a month. Now he's like Wonderful. gambling. We see the results. He's, he's going crazy now, but um, is there any reason why it shifted? Because so I was trying to explain to him. I was telling him maybe there's no yeah, explanation. Totally. Yeah, no. Uh, what ends up happening is the system will eventually start to realize that there's a ad fatigue happening, and you've exited learning, so it essentially knows what's selling. And so the system's <laughs> gotten so sophisticated in understanding the audience, it, it's really not going to have too much issues with selling the uh, the same type of product, um, just with a different creative, because the audience is so tuned in that literally, like the moment it shows that creative, it's it's going to have a much higher chance of just being able to convert um mm -hmm. right out the shoot and automatically that's what happened here so like that's why you saw like a hard shift we've literally seen creatives disappear overnight and new ones just literally launch in with hundreds of purchases you know flooding them and that creative had been active for you know months but had zero purchases and all of a sudden it was right. as if just one day happened and all of the purchases shift over it's totally normal and it's and it's why we have those backup ad creatives in there because of these situations um, but unfortunately, I, I guess since he doesn't have stock here, you know, you have to make a decision on how you want to approach this moving forward, which would either be promoting, you know, the only wax and getting all of the spend on there, knowing that the purchase cost might be a little higher or launching a different uh, uh, product potentially. That's a number like that is pretty much a bestseller as well with a lot of stock. Right. Yeah. He's got all the Christmas ones coming out. I mean, they're they're really funny. Um, cause we realize that we think it's the ones that, you know, really stand out. Like these nuts stands out, you know, does really well hung or show me your melons. Does that really like get people excited? Like, Hey, I want to buy this for someone. We don't know, but he's got the, the Christmas ones, you know, and those are <laughs> crazy. So I think we're going to wait to launch those. Um, and just naturally the cost for purchase has been rising a little bit each week. And, and so the other thing is when we, when so he was spending 350 a day and then he said all right just take 100 off i, I gotta figure this shit out for the next few days so we took it 100 off now we're spending 250 and i don't know if it's just because naturally yesterday and today aren't the best days usually but the cost for purchase like yesterday was 12 dollars, and then today was um is like 20 24 dollars um so i don't know if taking away money kind of screws up everything or how does that work yeah, you're feeding it less data. So, I mean, think of it as like a momentum, you know, you don't want to slow down momentum when it's happening because it causes too much friction. Um, and essentially, whenever you get to an account that's producing results so consistently and you start to pull back spend, it actually hurts it because it needs that data to run so smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, and realistically, the, the beautiful thing about this is actually the more spend, the better in your case. Not a lot of accounts can do that. Not a lot of ad accounts are able to increase their spend and see a direct decrease in cost per result. But when everything's so structured and organized like yours, like with you having one audience that's really large and having really one product focus, it's so much easier um, to scale. And so literally you scaling will drop the cost per purchase, but you, you know, scaling back actually hurts you. So it's one of those unique scenarios, which is a blessing, but you know, in this case, it's unfortunate. Yeah. And yeah. And like you kind of say, and I always say to him, we haven't tapped into really anything yet. Don't you agree? We're only launching. Oh yeah. One. If they had stock, I mean, we'd be spending easily one to 2000 per day. Yeah. Yeah. He said he, on his Amazon 
and eBay charges are like a hundred thousand a month. So he wants to kind of switch that over to this now. And he also said that as soon as these ads launched and they started doing well, he saw a decrease on his Amazon purchases. I don't think that's correlated at all either to say, but you think that's just kind of coincidence? Uh, wait, what is that? He said his Amazon orders per day, because he's doing about 10,000 a day on Amazon, went down as soon as we started running ads. He said it's probably just a coincidence, but- As soon probably, as you started running ads? As soon as we started running his ads, his Amazon orders went down, like gradually over the last month. No, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's probably just a coincidence. Okay. So you think I should just tell him, I mean, so that, what, so what would you do? Because if he doesn't, he said uh, he has to find out all of the inventory on all of his products and then get all of the ads out. So that way you can just start unloading his inventory. Okay. But, uh, you know, he's going to likely stop you at some point w before he empties out his inventory because uh, with him being on Amazon, the last thing you want to do is run out of is last thing you want to do on Amazon is sell out your inventory because it's going to destroy your rankings. So right. he'll, he'll probably notify you pretty early on like he did before. So, I mean, like you should probably just sell a lot more products. Um, so that way you can just, you know, have a lot more inventory to work with. Right. So it's not just all just these nuts. It's multiple, right? Yeah. Because I mean, if he's running out and he doesn't even have a distributor that's able to produce it, then I mean, like, you know, we're running on borrowed time before it's all of this is gone. Right. Okay. All right. And then the other thing is, um, so we're launching these tomorrow. I set it up as all the videos. So there's two videos and then I launched each one for the bold bag, medium K cups and the medium bag. I think that's the best to do. Uh, what's the best seller? Uh, it's the medium rose K cups. But again, I don't know if, you're driving people to a K-Cups page and what if they are, they like most people we find out like bold bags, you know? I mean, I uh, so what, what was the number one bestseller for the candles? Oh, for the candles? It's, it's these nuts. Okay. What's the number one seller for Bada Bean? It's the medium K-Cups. Okay. Yeah, let's stick to strategy and just do that. <laughs> As a setup, I like it. Um, okay. And you think I should still just be targeting New Jersey or anything? I should open it up now that we have these videos then? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, all of his sales primarily come from New Jersey? Yeah, I mean, they, most of them come from New Jersey, but that's also, you know, it's a very, he had a lot of fans from his Jersey store, so. Hmm. And I don't think from these videos, really, it's really Jersey. It's more just mafia. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could certainly give it a shot again and just go open with it now that you have these uh, videos. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I don't want to just leave it to New Jersey and other things are doing better, you know? Totally. And then when should I start to run the, because I remember you said these are the top of funnel, these videos. When should I start to run the, the direct and should I run them as retargeting ads or? Because you have these videos, but then we also have the graphic design of like, hey, take 15% off your purchase. Yeah, uh, certainly have the retargeting going. Okay. And we also have a retargeting video. Use that too, obviously. Yes. Okay. All right. Should be good. And then uh, Wednesday, we'll kind of regroup and see how this is going since we're launching tomorrow. Awesome. That works. All right. All right. I'll see you, Chase. Thanks,